Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This segment is brought to you by Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest-growing boutique cigar companies providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance in the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Paleo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offers the same quality, construction, and detail, which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all the tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. Apollo is still with me here in studio. On the lines via Skype, we, of course, have Mr. Will Cooper and Mr. Jack Taranio, a representative of Duran Premium Cigars. Welcome, Jack, to the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on again. Yes. Uh, before we get into our interview, Jack, we're just going to do a very quick little kind of informative segment on uh, rum, and particularly rum from a, a specific country of Cuba. Yes. So I uh, had the pleasure of visiting uh, London and France two weeks ago. And when I was out there, of course, being an American, I wanted to try some really good Cuban rum. So I tried the uh, Ron Zacapa as mm -hmm. well as the Havana Club. And I got to say, you know, my background, I used to be a bartender, and I think to myself like a modern mixologist as well. <clears throat> and I got to say, the, uh, the flavor you get out of a really good Cuban rum, it's literally unlike anything you find from anything you get in America. You know, I've had, I'd say, probably the neighborhood of almost 50 American rums right now. Mm -hmm. um, what really or rums from other regions that can legally distribute in the U.S. In America, right? yeah. yeah. So, um, I gotta say, the, the rum you get from Cuba, this is more of the premium stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, I, you gotta double check this stuff. I, I'm guessing this stuff sells for like 70 bucks U.S., right around there, roughly. Okay. If you were to import it and all that stuff, or, you know, get it from Cuba and bring it in. Um, but yeah, this, this rum tastes like a cigar. It's, it does. It's, it's, it's almost like it's blended to just go with cigars. Oh, yeah, entirely. And that's the funny thing, too, about good liquors is that they're representative of where they're from. You know, they're going to blend these um, cocktails, their liquors, and their wines as well based on what the local profile is. And, of course, what, at the end of the day, what, kind of, what do you expect coming from Cuba? You know, mm -hmm. you're going to find things that pair really well with cigars. Yeah. And this rum does. You can look at it. You know, the color, it's a nice golden auburn color. You know, it's not a black rum. It's not a white rum. It's a mid-tone rum. Um, this one, I, I'll check that one. Yeah, this is actually a triple barrel-aged rum um, from Havana Club. Can't get this in America. You can get, a, you can get Havana Club itself in America. It's a different, different blend kind of style. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you put it in your nose. Yeah, you, know. you have a very, like, like wine. You translate oh, yeah. that to rum. Whiskey, scotch, bourbon. Yeah, that's the thing too. You know, if you want to really taste something really well, how do you do it? Um, it's I like to. It's it, down south. It's called the Kentucky Chew. You put it in your mouth, you coat. You get a good swig of it. You coat your mouth, and I'll show it to you. Kind of, you kind of slurp in. I'll show you really quick. All right, so I got to try this now. <laughs> that's a wonderful sound. <laughs> and then it sounds weird. Is it though, Jack? I tell you, the way it coats your palate is tremendous. It's <laughs> tremendous. Yeah, my taste buds are all tingling now. You got to kind of smack your lips a little bit. And it sounds weird, but the thing is, what's happening is you're getting those flavors in your mouth, and you're actually getting up to your sinuses. Mm. That's smacking, that's slurping. It's almost like retrohaling the, the drink. Basically, yeah. Um, it's a great way that's of cool. tasting it. And what's kind of cool, I'm sure you're experiencing this right now, your mouth is watering. Yes. And it's because of the alcohol content. You know, anything that's I think it's because I want more rum and cigar. But. Well, probably that too. Yeah. I wouldn't put that past you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, the alcohol or the acidity, if you have a cocktail, um, it'll make your mouth water. And it kind of gives you a good sense of what that alcohol is doing. Um, but yeah, this, this stuff is amazing. No, that's great. That's some, that's some great tips, Apollo. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that uh, here to the Stogie Geek Show. And I'll tell you what. If I can share my knowledge anytime I can. Yes, please, please. You're welcome back anytime. And it's pairing very well with my Naya Cigars, Lajero F8 Typhoon. 
uh, which Jack is here to tell us more about all of the cigars uh, underneath your label. So, Jack, welcome back to the show. I, I, I want you to start by telling, you, telling us about uh, the F8, because it's one of my favorites. Um, the Lajero that you put in this cigar is absolutely wonderful. It's not so strong that it overwhelms your senses, but gives you that wonderful sweetness that I love in the Lajero tobacco. So why don't you start by telling us about this cigar? Well, well the, Nea, the Nea F8 was actually one of my favorites when I joined up eight, nine months ago. You guys waving at each other? Is yeah, I know. Okay? Apollo has to leave to catch his train, so. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on, Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I really pushed, uh, to get line extensions on it, to get that secondary band put on it, to really push it. Cause the price point again is phenomenal. You know, six fifty seven bucks for, uh, for a six, six, a six fifty six or a six sixty. And we're going to, we're for the show, we're releasing a seven seventy. Nice. Uh, that's going to retail for seven seventy. So, uh, wow. wow. So I think the, the, the price point's phenomenal. It's a really good smoke. Uh, Top-of-the-line tobacco goes into that cigar. Uh, the wrappers, again, uh, you know, we grow all this stuff, and uh, we're re very proud of that blend. And, and Jack, the, F8, the 770 is going to have the F8 blend in it, right? It's going to have the F8 blend, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be called the Big Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pushed I love for the, it. I love Roberto. It. Roberto hates 770s. He didn't like I, that size, and uh, I pushed well, okay. and pushed, and Miguel, our national sales director, pushed for. You know, th this this was really an extension of the Nea Classic with only two sizes. So when we we got a lot of great feedback on it, we decided that uh, we needed some line extensions on it. You know, a true robusto. Uh, um, we're actually going to put out a 558, and and then I wanted to push for a 770 because the market really likes that size. Roberto didn't want to do it, and then finally he said, "Well, you're going to smoke all the samples, and I'm going to call it the Big Jack." Mm. So, so yeah, said, yeah. And when I when I met you guys in Miami, that I would have never expected Roberto. Be, he's a traditionalist, and I, I you know, from talking Absolutely. to him, so I'm, so I was completely shocked to hear about 770 just now so yeah you know for folks who may not be familiar with the f8 versus the classic there's there's you have the nail line maybe you can explain for some folks there about that well the nail line it was something i hadn't seen before there were five vitolas uh three of them were considered the nail classic which was a, a much lighter blend uh true medium bodied cigar and then the 656 and the 660 the two bigger sizes um, were designated F8, which uh, had a couple of uh, Lijero leaves in it to give it a little more spice and kick. And it really started taking off, but you really couldn't tell. The wrapper colors were, uh, they varied a little bit from the classic to the F8, but you really couldn't tell the difference. And um, the problem we started seeing was that a lot of people that like that fuller body cigar, but are Robusto smokers or smaller ring gauge smokers, they they couldn't get it, and and then vice versa. The people that like the 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 medium bodied classic line and liked bigger ring gauges, they were for the most part shit out of luck too. I can say shit on the show, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. If you can if you can talk about Cuban rum, I can say shit on the That's show. Right. I, I'm pretty sure. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, so, uh, <laughs> such a character, Jack. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, so we we kind of split them out. And, uh, and rebranded the boxes. The boxes also um, said Nea Cigar Company, which I thought was kind of odd. It almost seemed like it was a cigar that we were distributing instead of mm. one of ours. So the boxes now say Nea by Duran Cigars. And, uh, and, uh, and it's been rebranded and really, really taking off. Uh, it, it, it's, to me, a company, a, a, a true boutique company like ours needs a cigar to put them on the map. And uh, we have a great portfolio and, and some really cool blends, but you need one of them to kind of take off and hit. And, and this is, I believe, really, really doing it for us. It's, it's quickly becoming our best seller, and, uh, and we're very happy with it. I, I love the F8 blend because it's that, that full-bodied but very smooth and sweet profile. And then when you go to the um, Duran Premium Cigar, uh, in the Robusto size that you had gifted us, 
that one is that what you you're smoking now, Will? Is that uh, the I'm, I have the Gordo though. The Gordo, it's, it's the six. Robusto in that size. I mean, I could smoke in the morning with coffee. It was just so it's such a wonderful medium bodied cigar. Um, very smooth and creamy, like a totally different profile. So I think you're really hitting the nail on the head with appealing to, you know, different types of smokers and different profiles. Yeah. If I could say, as a more amateur smoker, um, you know, I read some of the cigar blogs, read some of the reviews, mm. and, you know, I read the profiles and things like that. Uh, but, again, please, guys, correct me on this one. In my stupidity, my amateurishness, you know, when I approach a cigar, um, I judge the flavor profile immediately based on the color of the wrapper. Yeah. No, for, for, it, for good um, or bad. You know, yeah. I've had ones that are dark wrapper, light profile, you know, light light wrapper, dark profile. Yeah, it's totally not true. Oh, mo yeah. Most people, yeah, most people do associate things like that. They see a, a darker, a Maduro, and they associate that with just a full-bodied, strong cigar. And on the, other, on the other hand, they'll see a Connecticut, and they just immediately assume it's a very mild cigar. And um, it's, just, <laughs> it's just not true, as you... Uh, as you uh, grow learned. and learn, yeah. As you as you have learned and and to appreciate cigars like you do Cuban rum, you will. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll keep giving you shit about the Cuban rum, by the way. You're not a big uh, fan right. of Cuban rum, are you, Jack? <laughs> not a big fan of Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still, I still, I will sit here and tell you that I believe there's a bit of the forbidden fruit in that, uh, in that review. I mean, that that's Bacardi. You know, it, it, for, be for better or worse, it's Bacardi. Bacardi's the one that put out all those blends. Yeah. No, and, uh, it, and you're, and I, you're absolutely right, Jack. It, it is certainly the forbiddenness of it definitely plays into your perception of it, right? I, I and, remember when I, when, I grew up, when I grew up, you couldn't get Coors beer east of the Mississippi. And every time we had somebody, a friend, would go on vacation to Colorado, he was like, bring back Coors. you got to bring back a six-pack of this stuff. And they'd bring it back, and we'd sit there and drink it like it was Dom Perignon. We'd mm -hmm. bite and then they released it, and that stuff sucks. And then it was Coors beer. <laughs> you know, y Yingling is the same thing. When you couldn't oh, get yeah. Yingling here oh, in New yeah. England, it was like, oh, my God, this beer is so great. But now that we have it here, I still think it's not a bad beer. Don't get me wrong. But it's it, a good draft. It's, it's lost but, yeah. that, yeah, it, it's lost that somewhat of the some mystique. of its appeal. The mystique about it yeah. is gone, Jack. You're absolutely, your point is, is spot on. So, Jack, again, I'm, I'm 29 years old. I've been exploring cigars for about five years now. Um, what kind of advice and suggestion would you give for someone that's trying to really explore the world of cigars? Um, smoke everybody's cigars. Little smoke by little. Smoke everything, yeah. Smoke everything. From a mild, I mean, listen, try a mild, try a medium, try a full-bodied cigar. Get to know your palate a little bit. And, and certainly, um, I, I'd love to sit here and tell you or anybody else to smoke Duran exclusively, but there's I'm some smoking amazing... Duran right now. I'm, I am yeah. Yeah. very impressed. <laughs> it's, a there are, it's that there new Davidoff Duran. There's some amazing cigars out there, and, and, and if, you, if you're growing into becoming a nice cigar aficionado, you, you want to sample blends from everybody. And, uh, and you, you'll find some amazing blends in that price range, under $10, and... and uh, and you'll find some pretty amazing ones in the twenty to thirty dollar range, but mm. you know, good everyday smoke. Everybody knows the sweet spots in that six to eight dollar range, and uh, and there's just some phenomenal cigars out there. I mean, uh, I, I I love trying everybody's cigars. So, so. two points. One is because I have some classy friends. Mm -hmm. What's funny is I have more female friends right now that smoke cigars with me than male friends. Now you're bragging. No, no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I, am, I am dead serious. Again, I'm late 20s. I'm 29 years old right now. I got Are friends. you married? No, I'm single. Oh, well, I'm, I'm dating. Dating. There you go. Yeah. Hopefully one of your female friends who smoke cigars. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend's just coming saying. around. She's coming just around. Um, but yeah, no. So I, I just find that really interesting. Just, you know, seeing more women, you know, quote unquote, coming out of the market and smoking cigars. I find that awesome. You know, I, uh, I go down. I live in Boston. So I go to Ellen J. Peretti. Mm -hmm. Love those guys. And they're, they're, they're so open. They're so accepting. They're just like, hey, come on in. We'll teach you everything we can. And we get some really good cigars. Sign of a good retailer. Yeah. And we, don't put the women in the flavored cigars. Oh, that's God, not, no. no. No, that's no. the thing, too. The guys there are really awesome. They're like, you know, what kind of flavors do you like? Yes. What are you looking for? Medium, light body. Sign of a good tobacconist right there. Mm -hmm. um, Jack, tell me about the Azan cigars. I smoked a few of those. I really like them. Um, how does yeah. that fit into the for portfolio? Well, the Azan was the original blend that Roberto put out um, coming out of the shoot. 2012, he started developing that. The Azan White, the Azan 
Maduro, which is, uh, the boxes say Maduro Natural, and what we mean by that is it's a naturally aged Maduro. We age that wrapper. We age all our wrappers um, to, what, to what we want. I mean, the, the Azan Premium is aged more like a Cuban Cohiba, uh, something Roberto was very familiar with and, and wanted to blend similar to that. And um, so we kind of stopped the aging on that to keep, give it that, that Cohiba color. The, um, the Azan Maduro is naturally aged 22 months. The Azan White is a, is a beautiful medium bodied cigar with a little Brazilian Arapiraca in the filler, which gives it a little sweetness. Um, um, the, the White and the Maduro um, are, are our best sellers. I mean, Nea F8 is catching up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, Nea F8 will, will be uh, the one that overtakes all that at the show. Um, but the Azan really has, uh, has, has fueled this, this, this voyage so far. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, as far as my profile goes, I prefer the F8, um, certainly something later in the day because it's so, it's a full bodied and, uh, has so much flavor, but doesn't overpower your senses. So I, I really enjoy these. You need to send more of these F8s, Jack, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when are they gonna When are they gonna be available next door? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, uh, believe me, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. <laughs> well, there's a little pay. There's a little payola heading your way as soon as that. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's There's my carrot to get them in next door, there right? It is. There it is. <laughs> Will, did you have more questions for Jack? I'm just. I'm kind of. I'm just no, shooting no, the I... shit with Jack and calling no, it an no. interview, but. No, no. It's actually uh, Paul brought up a really good point. I want to tie it into this point. So. Um, Apollo was talking about rapper and how he, it kind of maybe sometimes puts a perception about the strength and, you know, how how full the cigar is. Now, as I've kind of started smoking your cigars more and more, and, and you know, we appreciate, you know, the partnership here, um, I've kind of explored your line deeper. And, I, you know, this, this concept of EPF has been something that's really been interesting to me um, in terms of how you – the cigar experience progresses along the way. And I kind of, as I start smoking the cigars closely, Jack, this EPF concept really comes to the forefront. Maybe you could talk yeah. a little about what the EPF philosophy is. Well, I, there's, there's nothing worse to me than, than the thing I love about cigars and smoking a cigar is, is, is the complexity in it. To have a transition, to give you different flavors as, as, as the heat goes through it, the first third, the middle third, the last third, you'll, you'll get different flavors. There's nothing worse than getting a cigar that sits flat the whole way through. And, uh, and, and there's a technique that the Cubans used to use that Roberto's very familiar with that he, he's, uh, he's taught all the rollers is, is this um, progressive flavor that the way the cigar is rolled is to not knock you on your ass when you light it. Uh, even the F8, you, you won't feel that full bodiness in the first inch of that cigar. It will transition and get stronger. All our cigars do that, and it's the way the leaves are laid together, the way they are rolled. Um, it, it, it's, it's the best, best method, method for that cigar to transition and give you all the flavors that, that, that we want to convey in that cigar. So, so was, it's, yeah. it's very cocktail. interesting. And hopefully, hopefully you guys will be able to come down to the factory one day and, and, and check it out. Because it's very, I spent a week there and it's very interesting the way things are done there. Hey, who's that? <laughs> yeah, sorry, we have production assistants that are wandering around. Yeah, you, 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 you won't see that though. We, 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 could, we could bleep that out. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that doesn't get recorded. Yeah. There's, yeah. 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 We have. Production assistants, they like to run around, do things, clean glasses. So what you just get mentioned. Get us more drinks. What you just mentioned reminds nice. me of a good yeah, cocktail. Go is that, <clears throat> you know, when you're drinking a good scotch or a good rum or any kind of good liquor, is that you don't want to be overpowered by it. You want to, you know, bring it in slowly. And, mm-hmm. you know, the tasting, this, tasting notes are to bring it in, just a little taste of it, kind of get yourself acclimated to it. And it sounds like the exact same thing in a good cigar. Well, it's the same. It's one of the reasons why, to go along with what Jack was saying, why I like the old fashioned as a drink because when it starts off you get that really heavy bourbon flavor right and then as you drink the cocktail it gets sweeter and sweeter so mm. it's, it, and it makes a, a progression when you're drinking the cocktail and a cigar should do the same thing so yeah. it, it, that's one of the reasons why I prefer that particular and, cocktail and, and like I said if you go back and start really smoking the, the Duran cigars um, you really it's and, and you'll, you'll definitely it's a pattern. I mean, it is. It's a philosophy that uh, and technique. You can see this technique in, the, in every one of these cigars, which 
like I said, I started paying more attention to it, and it's definitely the case, which I love about this. It's kind of like a musical crescendo, I call it. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, as it's going there. Um, so, Jack, have we covered the full line of Duran cigars? Uh, we've covered the Azan, we've covered the Nea, we've covered the, the, the Roberto Duran uh, premium cigar is another small change that we are making. Mm -hmm. The actual bands and the logo that's sitting behind you is what's on that cigar, but it really didn't have an identity, didn't have a name. So that cigar is transitioning to the Roberto Duran signature. That will be his signature cigar, and we will take premium cigars off of that band, and it will say signature and it's it truly is his signature cigar. It's the one that, mm. uh, that his baby that he spent the most time on getting it to the flavor he wanted. So that's going to be his signature cigar. And then um, we have a uh, uh, basically a carton bundle brand called Baracoa, which uh, which has has gotten a lot of legs out there, which is uh, is doing uh, very well in certain regions. And uh, and for the show, we're coming out with two new bundles uh, uh, direct from the factory. Uh, Nika Tobacco is our factory in Esteli, and, and we have Nika, Nika Tobacco Factory Blend 1 and Factory Blend 2. And uh, they'll be coming out for the show, as will, uh, as will uh, a very special cigar uh, by our new master roller, Santo Cardenas, which is a Cuban legend roller that worked for Partagas and a lot of companies. He's been in this industry for 50 years, still a Cuban citizen. Um, but he hand rolled um, this uh, Salomon, this Santo Salomon that will come in an individual coffin and will be debuted at the show. And uh, and it, it's he tweaked that signature blend mm -hmm. to his liking. And uh, he gave it a few little tweaks, a little flavor tweaks, and and that Salomon is just phenomenal, a phenomenal cigar. And uh, and uh, hopefully you guys will get to try it at the show and uh, and 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 it'll get some uh, some play here. And is it the, is really it the same? Is it the same wrapper as the? It's the same wrapper as the uh, as the signature. Mm -hmm. um, he he messed with the uh, the fillers a little bit with uh, okay. the the bind, binder filler, uh, a little more to his liking, a little more to his flavor. It's not not far off, but but mm -hmm. um, I think it'll uh, the presentation's beautiful. It's coming in these individual hand numbered, hand signed coffins by Santo. And uh, we tried to get Santo to the IPCPR, but uh, Cuban government said no. So, uh, so uh, he he won't be at at the IPCPR, but he's in, currently in Nicaragua. I think he just might have left to go back to Cuba, but uh, hopefully you guys will all get to meet him soon. And uh, he's he's an extraordinary gentleman with some amazing stories. I bet. Um, and and he's been through a lot in this industry. So uh, that's that cigar. Um, is that going to be branded? It's going to be branded separate. It's going to have a different branding on it, right? Different label. It's going to it's going to be it's going to be similar, but it'll be it'll be a secondary band with Santo's signature on it. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be it'll be under the Roberto Duran signature series, um, but it'll be the Santo Cardenas. I mean, he only only like three thousand were hand rolled by him each one. He was three months in Nicaragua, which is kind of why the Cuban government won't let him out anymore this year, um, especially to come to the United States. He's, they're afraid we'll keep him. Now, now Jack, I'm sorry, changing gears here a little bit. I'm just there's some questions in our chat room. Um, yes. People want to know. Well, your name is Jack Taranio. Didn't you used to work for Taranio Cigars? And how did you come to work for for Duran Cigars? Uh, I did. I did. That is my last name. And and for the last. Three plus years up until September, oddly September 11th of 2014, uh, I worked for Taranio. And uh, as many of you know, or some may not know, uh, my cousin Charlie sold the company to General Cigar, and uh, that sale did not include any of us. So, uh, so Taranio is living its own life uh, at General Cigar, and uh, we basically were orphaned, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and. Uh, Roberto saw a really cool opportunity. He was ready to start taking this brand to another level. And uh, he hired uh, Taranio's national sales director, Miguel Chaudel. Mm -hmm. He hired our mid-Atlantic rep, Frank Cuden. And then he brought myself. Three days later, he brought me in and, uh, and hired me uh, to start taking this nationwide in the U.S. This brand, 
This brand's been available in Hong Kong and in other parts of the world and does very well in China. Mm -hmm. um, but in the U.S. market, it was basically unknown. We were probably in about 70-something retailers uh, in October mm -hmm. of last year. And we, we just, uh, I think we either just passed or just hit 300 retailers. So it's really, really starting to move, and Roberto saw a nice opportunity to bring in, uh, bring us in, and and I've known Roberto for about three or four years, and uh, and never thought I'd be working for him, but but I, listen, it's been an amazing journey, and I couldn't be happier. So, awesome, awesome. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm certainly enjoying the cigars, and I'm glad they're uh, getting more attention in the U.S. market. That's a big jump from 70 to 300. And yeah. to put it in perspective for the listeners, like 70s, not a lot of retailers in the U.S. No. Um, so to make that jump is certainly spectacular. Yeah, you 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 can get into 500, 600 to a thousand. You're you're you've got good coverage, and and uh, and and we're working toward that number by the end of the year. So so we're, we're very happy with the progress being made. Excellent. Will, did you have more questions for Jack? Yeah, Jack, we kind of got a little sidetracked, but I want to go back to uh, the, the the Nika Tobacco factory cigars that are coming out. So are those going to be alongside the Barracoas? Are they, uh, how are they going to differ? Uh, they're going to differ, and they're going to be – it's going to be a true bundle, cello bundle. They will have bands on them. Um, the Barracoa is a uh, – is, is I, I don't want to say higher end. Um, it's a little pricier bundle. Comes in a, a nicer, p nicer packaging. Uh, the bundle brands, you know, they're going to retail in the 40s. You know, the, um, you know, they're nice premium long filler bundles, and um, and and I think they're going to be a big hit. I mean, they're more and more, more and more uh, consumers out there are realizing how many how many good bundle brands are out there, and and when you have an everyday smoke or or a lot of people like to have two humidors at home where one is for their <laughs> friends and one is uh, for yeah, them. Yeah, I was just going to say, especially with summertime cre you know, creeping in and being in the summer mode, a lot of times you'll have uh, a bunch of friends over at your house and you don't want to give out your high-end premium cigars because, let's face it, a lot of your friends who aren't cigar smokers but are like, hey, I want a cigar, you know, they smoke the first inch and then they put it out. So yeah. having those bundled cigars that are really good and ones that you like to smoke and you'll smoke one with them, but you're not crying when someone, you know, leaves uh, a half a cigar Absolutely. in the ashtray. Yeah. Absolutely. The same Absolutely. thing for weddings, too. I know it's a big wedding season. I've talked to a couple of people recently. They're like, yeah, I'm having a wedding or I'm hey, bringing cigars to someone's wedding. And they're like, I, I don't want to bring my super premium high-end cigars because a lot of people will smoke the cigar for the event and, you know, get halfway through it and put it out. No, so that's that's great. Um, so, do all your bundles, Jack? Do they have um, do they have bands on them? All the bundles have bands. Yes, yeah, they do. and that's important, right? I mean, we talked about being in retailers, and you know, kind of touched on putting cigars out in the U.S. Having a band is important. I mean, we talk about how, as cigar geeks, like, well, the band doesn't matter as the flavor of the cigar, but when it comes to marketing in the cigar world, especially in the U.S., like, it has to have a band. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Listen, uh, you, I go back to my my days of buying CDs. You always wanted to 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 get the liner notes and read it. Now now that stuff is lost. I mean, people like to get a cigar and enjoy it and look at the band and look at the detail that went into it and right. and, and and get the story behind it. And and there's a lot of really cool consumers out there that that really delve into this more than I ever imagined. Mm. <laughs> As an amateur, yeah. I always save the bands. Yeah, you know what? I, I was thinking the other day I should start saving all my bands and make some artwork for the studio. That would be very you interesting. You just you tape you uh, tape them to a or you glue them to a mat and then put it in a frame. That'd and be it's beautiful. nice. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Uh, various cigar stores will have them, or you know, uh, people who are really big into cigars will have them hanging up, you know, in their smoking lounges right. at home so and stuff. Because so. it's so sweet, people usually think that it's like a cordial. Well, gets, well, uh, back to you. Do you uh, more questions for Jack? Um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah you, I know. Jack, you touched on what's coming out next. I don't know, if Willie, you want to push that envelope a little more? Or? Right. Well, yeah, we we'll get some background noise. I don't. <laughs> it's my wife. She won't shut up. Uh, <laughs> it's perfectly fine. It's okay. She's more than welcome to come on the show. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So you know, so you, so kind of recap. You had uh, the Nea's got the new sizes in the F8, the uh, the 58, the Big Jack, seven by seventy. 
You got the Nika Tobacco Factory line coming out. You got the Solomon on the Roberto Duran. And anything else that we didn't hit? Uh, we got the Azan White. We got some bigger ring gauges coming on in the Azan White, uh, six and a quarter by fifty sixes, and that and the uh, Azan Maduro. Uh, the, those those really didn't have a a, a, a Vitola over fifty two. We got some bigger ring gauges there. Um, and Jack, that makes sense. You wanted to appeal to the U.S. market for you to come out yeah. and, and suggest those larger ring yeah. gauges, right? I mean, that's just yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah. marketing. And and don't and it's funny. Will was just commenting before the show and saying that he's starting to dig those larger ring gauges. And I think cigar manufacturers in general are putting more focus and attention on some of those larger ring gauges. Where even cigar geeks like us are like, wow, I, I kind of I have my own personal wheelhouse of larger ring gauges that I like to reach for. I'm gonna have Roberto. I'm gonna have Roberto smoking a big jack by the IPCPR. You want? We're, we're, we're gonna get that on video. That's right. Yeah. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get that. You know, it, this is, he's the second traditionalist in a week who's announced the seventy. There you go. You see, Tally actually announced the seventy. Who I would be the other person I wouldn't expect. Um, and who it, was that? Will you, know, you got cut off there for a minute? Vic, Victor Vitali came right. out with a seventy, okay. which I never would have expected either. So, um, you know, there's obviously a good market for it. And if the blend works, I say I, I'm, I'm more in favor. I actually like the, the Roberto P. Duran signature in this 60. Yeah, yeah. Large well, then the you're, you're definitely liking the bigger ring gauges then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a good it's, – but it's, this is a good, good 60 ring gauge. Mm. Awesome. I li you know, I like I like the larger ring gauges, especially when you're outside in the warmer weather here in New England during the summertime. You're outside in the deck, you know, maybe you're grilling, you're having some cocktails, you know, the kids are playing in the yard, so your family and friends are over. And I, I like to light up a larger larger ring gauge. I know it's going to stay lit, um, you know, being outside in the in the elements. And um, that, you know, and then the, and well. then the cool thing is that we also have um, that it was more geared toward. The uh, travel retail, the uh, the 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 uh, Chinese uh, travel retail duty free market. We have two different, uh, actually like three or four different. Uh, the Azan Burgundy and the Premium line, the signature line. We have um, some three packs that are coming out, and one of the sizes is a little like a it's like a four and a quarter by forty six. It's like a little Rothschild. Mm -hmm. Uh, torpedo like uh, we call it puntica mm. and that size in that blend is just smoking did i not leave you any of those paul no i, I thought didn't I, I thought i left you some of the little ones i didn't no no i haven't yeah because i mean yeah. going in the opposite direction right like if i'm and that's gonna for be really good for you for for you guys in january when you got to smoke really quick and get yeah. back indoors winter um, months or you know when it's late at night i want to have a cigar but I, and it's already like 11 o'clock at night and i don't want to be up till like 2 a.m having a cigar i'll mm -hmm. reach for a smaller size like that um, and that, that's perfect. Even in the summer months, sometimes at the end of the night, you want to end your day with a cigar, but it's late. So Yeah, so you'll see those three packs. They come in 10-count uh, boats, ten, 10 of those little three packs in a boat, um, mm -hmm. and it's really good for, uh, for travel retail, and we're, we're hoping it takes off a little in the U.S. market. The U.S. market is tough on those uh, samplers and three packs, but there, is, there, are, yeah. there are places that it does sell. And uh, and and I think especially the the puntica, the little uh, the little torpedo is really going to do well because it's it's just full of flavor. Do you offer a sampler pack of any kind with the petites? You know, not yet, not I yet. Would we've love talked to see that. We've talked about it. Oh, I can get you a sampler, but it, we don't sell it. Mm. <laughs> but uh, but we've talked about we've talked about samplers. But man, every every store I go to, it's just it's just a tough sell. The thing is, is, again, when I go to LJ Preddy's, I reach towards their bargain bin, mm -hmm. and those things are generally the sampler, or smaller sizes, and I like it a lot because it gives me a chance to kind of explore various brands. Yeah, and a, a lot of retail shops will put together their own sample yeah. packs too. And uh, and that can be nice, but yeah, you're right. It's good for the the novice smoker that, like you know, Jack was saying, the recommendation is to smoke a lot of different stuff, and to do that on a budget, you know, a sample pack is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, and and, I, and, and you know what's great, like I said, about the Roberto the Roberto Duran line are there is really a cigar for everybody in this line. Um, that that's what I really find great is you there's a cigar that someone Jack, I'm sure you've walked into a store and and someone tells you what they smoke it and. You have no problem, basically. Yeah, yeah, we we have something very similar. Uh, we have all all, all the. Uh, the oh. <laughs> I'm watching my wife light a cigar. Uh, we. <laughs> there we go. Wife. Good wife. We're gonna we, get to that we, camera. 
Yeah. She doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's running. She's running. She's like, no, no. Um, so, yeah, the, the mild, medium, full-bodied. Uh, uh, we, we got all the flavors pretty much covered right now. And, mm. and with the line extensions and, and the new releases, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about coming out with some new blends for this show, but we came out with three last year, and really, they're just starting to take off, and we're, we're very happy with where the portfolio is right now, so um, we're, we're, we feel we got a very strong lineup right now, so we're, we're, we're holding off on, other than the Santo, that, that special limited release, uh, everything you see will be basically the line extensions of, of a current brand. Yeah, I think that's I think that, where, where you are right now, Jack. I think that's that's super smart, and you're coming yeah. out with sizes that I think are really going to appeal to the markets in the U.S., larger ring gauges, three packs in those smaller sizes, which as the winter approaches later in the year, is good, they're going to be huge. Yeah, and, and you know, you you know, you got a guy like Santo now, and I mean, and that guy's goodness. You got a, you got. He's going to do a lot of good things, I think, for you guys. So. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have very high uh, high hopes and expectations of Santo, and and yeah. and he will he will uh, he will come through. He's he's an amazing man, and when you guys get to meet him, I know you'll be blown away by him. Yeah. Now, will Will any final questions for Jack? I have a big one actually. Yeah. yeah. So subtly, we've been kind of talking about this. Uh, we actually mentioned it when we were, when we kind of went through the spot for Jack before he came on. There's been a, another change, Jack, in terms of uh, naming. Yeah, we, we, we were always Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigars. And uh, myself, Miguel, we've been kind of arguing the, uh, the point that, that it's a little too long in title. Mm. Um, and, and Duran Cigars was the way we've been, we've, been, we've been pushing Roberto on. And it took him a few months to, to come around. But uh, a month ago, a uh, month and a half ago, we... Uh, we slowly started making the transition to Duran cigars, and uh, and uh, it, it, it's. I think it's a lot easier for the consumer to remember. It's. I don't have to field any more questions about is it the boxer, uh, uh, and and uh, and as as the thing is that we do have a lot of packaging. We do have a lot of bands that still have the Roberto P. Duran, but as that runs out, all the new orders are being ordered as Duran cigars. All the invoices, everything you see. That that ad you see behind you will will transition to Duran cigars. So uh, so we're we're very happy with that name change. The uh, the whole booth at the IPCPR will be Duran. Excellent. Well, best of luck with yeah, the, with the the rebranding and name change. I've gone through it with some of my businesses yeah, they, as well, and um, it, it's certainly an opportunity, right, to to help market yourself because you're marketing your new brand, and I find it increases brand awareness. It's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, right? Like you said. We're redoing images, we're redoing oh, yeah. all these things, but it's it's worth it. So um, I yeah. congratulate you on that. So before it, it before, rolled, it, before we go you. anywhere, I wanna I wanna give a give a little plug to where I'm sitting because this store closed at eight o'clock tonight. Mm -hmm. This is Cigar Hustler in Deltona. And uh, if you guys are looking for stuff that's hard to find, cigarhustler.com is where you wanna go. Someone and, uh, told me that recently, Jack. Someone Absolutely. mentioned them to me just this week, and it's funny I got, that you said I, it's that. It's a couple of brothers. I got one of them sitting behind me who was gracious enough to stay here, and uh, he might be drunk by now, but I don't think so. <laughs> He's working on it. He's working on it, Mike. And uh, well, I, you... can't, I can't pronounce their last name, and I can't pronounce the name of their new cigar. Uh, I call it Down Under. What's the name of it? Pastania. But Post it's an Daniel. amazing cigar made by the Nika Sueño guy, uh, Skip Martin, and it is just, I've been smoking it. It's a phenomenal smoke. They carry the Nea F8. This is where you want to call. This is where uh So you can call you, them or go, go. To the, or go to their website? You go to their website, cigarhustler.com. Well, right, you, Mike? You yes. tell them that Paul from Stogie Geeks is going to be placing an order really soon. Paul, Paul from Stogie Geeks is going to be placing an order real soon. <laughs> <laughs> but Wait, uh, but okay. it's just it? amazing because I, I, when I asked him if I could do it from his store, I, I had no idea they closed at 8 o'clock. And mm. uh, I, I got here and I, I, at, at no moment did I feel like I was imposing. They, they, these guys have been amazing. They've been, they've been, they've been more than, than just a retailer to me. They've been good friends. And, 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 uh, and I, I have to give them a shout out and I have to give awesome. Give uh, Greg here a, a shout out because it, it was just amazing. Well, I called. I think I might have yeah. called him Mike a little while ago, but it's Greg. <laughs> Greg is behind me. So, That's the thing uh, I love about cigars that. too is it's it's really a global community of people. 
that yeah. appreciate mm -hmm. good quality, you know, good flavors. And the thing is, when I was in London, when I was in France, you know, I went into the stores, I went into some of the whiskey bars, and the minute I started talking about it, everyone lit up. Everyone mm -hmm. knew what I was talking about, and they're like, "Yeah, you're part of the club. You know what I'm talking about." Right. It's. it's I don't think. I don't think the FDA realizes what 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 a mm. beautiful industry they they are. Uh, hopefully not about to, but yeah. trying to yeah. trying to really screw up badly mm -hmm. because yeah. uh, it's it's an amazing community, and uh, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs, and a lot of manufacturers are going to be out of business if uh, if things go that way. So. I know. So, I don't know if it's too late now, but but really, people got to jump on board with the CRA and uh, and and get things going and 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 talk to your congressman, your commissioner, your talk to anybody and 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 try to try to convince these people that that they're going the wrong way. So, Jack, are you ready to play five questions with the Stogie Geeks? I'm ready. Alrighty. Three words to describe yourself. Uh, I am a fun-loving teddy bear. Is that four words? That's yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll let it slide. <laughs> I'm playing five questions. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? A torch lighter. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Lucky. In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Is that like Rochambeau? So uh, <laughs> I, I, I prefer to go first. <laughs> Choose two celebrities to be your parents. Two celebrities to be my parents. It would be uh, uh, Bradley Cooper and uh, Scarlett Johansson. There you go. Nice. There you go, Jack. Jack, yeah. always nice to have you on the Stoey Geek Show. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for coming on the show this evening. Thank uh, you, guys, for all the support you've given us. It, it, it's been amazing, and you helped get the word out there, and, uh, and we, there's not a moment that we don't appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jack. Uh, stay on the line. We're going to end the segment, but stay on the line. Don't go anywhere. Uh, so with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about our Stogies of the Week so you get to hear about what Will and I have been smoking for the past week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.